your child? What occupies your mind the most? For me, I grew up with one idea. I did not want to live my life like everyone else. I wanted to do something so special that no one else has ever done before. But I did not know what. And so I began to think. I wanted my parents proud of me. I wanted to be someone. I wanted to be very special. And I began thinking as a child. And I said, what can I do that will make not just my parents proud of me, but the entire world? And thinking about it, I said, OK, well, my father is a teacher. My mom is a teacher. And I knew that I did not want to be a teacher, which I am today. <laughs> but I said, OK, I'm sure there's something that I can do that will make me that special person. And then one day, it hit me. And it was the Arabic language. I grew up in America, in New Jersey, in a place where people believe that it is impossible for an American to learn the Arabic language like the Arabs. My father speaks Arabic very well, but still, when he speaks, people know that he's not a native. People know that he's still a foreigner who learns some Arabic. And my father always said to me, said to me, Amir, I want you to be better than me in everything in life. I want you to be the person that I could not be. And I do not know what I could do to be better than my father. But eventually, I began to think about it. And I said, it is the Arabic language. I will prove to myself that I can learn it like anyone else. And I began to hope. I began to dream. But still, there's no way in the world I can achieve that dream. My dream began at that time was to study with my father for the Sakara. And the time when it came to enter his classroom, my school closed down. I was devastated. My father, every summer, would travel to an Arab country to brush up on his Arab skills. And I would beg him every single year. And I would say to him, take me with you. And he would say to me, no, next time. And then we would just talk about things, about how my life should be. And mind you, all of this is, I'm between the age of five to seven. And when I was seven years old, he was traveling to Egypt. And I said, take me with you. And he said once again, no, I'll take you next year. And so I said, you said that last year. And so he said, OK, fine. If you get good grades this year, I'll take you with The result, I was among the top 100 in my, in my state, which was very successful. And I came to Egypt, and I stayed for three months, and I went back. But tasting a little bit of seeing what it's like to follow my dream, I wanted some more. My mind became obsessed with the opportunity to travel again and study. And I began to say, if I could only have a chance, I would prove all those people wrong. And one year, when I was 10 years old, my father calls me and says, Amir, I want to speak with you. I go and sit down, and he says, do you remember three years ago when you traveled to Egypt? Would you like to go back again and stay there and study? And I said, yeah, uh-huh. And so he said to me, but I'm not coming with you. Your mom is not coming with you. Your brothers, they're staying here. All of your friends and family will be here. Are you sure you want to go? I said, yes. He said, are you aware that you may die here? I, may, I will be there for you. We may die here. And you get to see us. Are you sure about that? My father is a very practical man. And he wanted to make sure that after I traveled, I wouldn't call out the one who would say, I want to go home. <laughs> and so he wasn't sure about it. But at that time, I saw my dream in my hand. And so every objection he said was as if he was saying, Whoa, whoa. And so I traveled. I landed in Alexandria Airport, January 31st, 2000. And it was raining cats and dogs. I stuck out of the airport and I 
taxi. The taxi driver tries to be friendly with me and tries to speak with me. But he can't speak any English. And I don't speak any Arabic. <laughs> and so he's trying to ask me what's my name in the Egyptian accent. And um, I did not take that in school. <laughs> and so he's trying to help using body language, which was useless. And then I find out, okay, maybe he's saying, what's my name? And so I said, Amir. And then he literally says, okay, he asked me how old I was, which I did not understand either. And so he's trying his English, and so he says, you, Count A. <laughs> Bye. 
لبعض الظروف وبعض الاحوال. اولها حين تنقذ المدرسه في يوم وكان الجو باردا فاردت ان اهب النافذه فقلت للمدرس مدرس النحل الذي يعلمني العربيه قلت له يا استاذ ساقوم لاهب النافذه فقال ايه؟ فقلت ساقوم لاهب النافذه طلعت فقلت هو ماذا يشبك؟ Thank <laughs> you. 